Now we're going to do the same procedure with some slightly messier data. So I've got some log mass and log time period data here. We've got some negatives, um, not very round numbers. So we're going to apply the same procedure to this and see how that works out. So in the x direction, log m goes on the x-axis. Okay, so this is log m. Uh, then we've got minus 0 0.155 minus, and don't forget that this is subtracting a negative, and that will be divided by 14. And when you do that, you get 0 0.0389. Uh, if we double that, that comes out as 0 0.0777. So I've got to choose a, value, a round value in that range. Oh, sorry, I didn't say times two equals there. And so I, I'll go with 0 0.05. Okay, so that's just above that and reasonably below that one. So we'll try that, that should be fine. And then we do the same thing in the y direction. This is with log t. So my maximum value is minus 0 0.016. The minimum value is minus 0 0.276. And that will all be divided by 10. Uh, so that comes out as 0 0.026. And if we multiply that by 2, that's 0 0.052. Uh, so my round value, I can't use 0 0.025 because that would be below that. Uh, I can use 0 0.05, which is close to this one. So this, in the y direction, our graph will probably be nearer the halfway mark than using the full grid. But I think that's probably the best thing to do there. So I'm going to use 0 0.05. I'm actually using the same scale on the x and y axes. Uh, but obviously we've got different starting points because the data uh, is obviously using a different range. So let's have a look at how that looks on the grid. So we are, yeah, uh, so before I do that actually, we need to decide where we're actually going to start with these values. So here it, it really makes sense to start at minus 0 0.7, uh, which is just below this and it's round. It's going to work nicely with our 0 0.05. So what I'm going to do is start at minus 0 0.7. Minus 0 0.7. And the increment is 0 0.05. So for each two, two large squares, that will be my, um, plus 0 0.1. So this will be minus 0 0.6. Maximum, I forget. Minus 0 0.155. So that would be between these two. So I've covered enough there. Uh, that will be around here. So yeah, using more than half the grid there. And like I said, for, for this data point, you know, do you go for minus... 0.3 or minus 0.28 as a starting point we're going up in 0.05s so I would say start minus 0.3 here that's my lowest point and then go up and that should there should be enough leeway in this particularly yeah particularly as I'm closer to the halfway mark there should be enough uh, leeway to include all the data there so let's put the data in so I was starting at Minus 0 0.3, I'm going to put that down here. Uh, minus 0 0.3. And the, the scale is actually the same as the x-axis, as I mentioned earlier. So this will be minus 0 0.2 here. And then we're to the zero. That will actually cover all of our data since uh, the value was 0 0.016.
Okay, so where does that fall here? So this would be 0 0.01, this 2, so it's about there. And so I need this to be more than five large squares. And 276 is going to be kind of around here, I think. So one, two, three, four, five. So it is just in there. Uh, yeah, yeah, that works. So there we go. It is more than half the graph grid, and that's what we want to use. So hopefully that strategy will help you. It's a very quick calculation to do to ensure that you're using half the graph. It doesn't take long, you're just working out the difference between your maximum and minimum, and then dividing it by how many squares you've got. So you just need to count how many squares you've got in the y-axis and the x-axis.